Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing exceptionally well. And can you believe that it's already the middle of August? Because I certainly can't. And inspired by this transitional period between summer and fall, I decided to learn more about the transitional periods in music and art. Um, I chose two artists and one composer for today's episode, so I hope you enjoy. Nature is suffused with deeper hues. Autumn's first whispers color the early morning hours, while the days are still hot and wind sings of summer. This delicate, barely noticeable transition between the seasons is magical, as the summer's pleasures meet anticipation of fall's harvest. No less entrancing are the transitions between different genres of art and music. And just as one feels the approaching autumn in the atmosphere of a summer evening, so do works of J. M. W. Turner, John Constable, and Richard Wagner prefigure modern genres of painting and music. Let's begin with J. M. W. Turner. He was born in 1775 in London, and throughout his life he traveled extensively, his impression with majestic Roman architecture a prominent theme in his early painting. Most of Turner's early works are romantic, with nature's grandeur and unpredictability taking the front stage, while man, a fragile creature at the mercy of higher forces, stands in the background. Turner's painting, Dito Building Carthage, for instance, is influenced by the classical masters, such as Claude Lorraine, whom Turner deeply admired. Combining landscape and history, Turner symbolizes the dawn of Carthage by depicting a bright sunrise over the newly constructed temples. But in the right corner of the painting, concealed in shadows, stands the tomb of Dito's deceased husband, Sicius, as a stark reminder of the Carthage's ultimate fate. Another historical painting Turner created in 1812 is Hannibal and his army crossing the Alps. Although unmistakably romantic in the description of a formidable general as a small figure utterly powerless when confronted with nature, the curve of the snowstorm is reminiscent of the wide, bold strokes utilized by Impressionists and later perfected by Expressionists. This curling wave of the storm contains in itself the curves of the starry night, as well as the foreshadowing of revolutionary art movements that would sweep the artistic world leaving old forms of expression helpless, like Hannibal's army. As Turner's artistic career progressed, he continued to hone his own style, romantic in its themes but novel in expression. Juxtaposing the rooftops of Venice at sunrise to Monet's impression sunrise, the viewer is struck with the similar approach at depicting the start of a day. Dreamy and hazy, both paintings convey the atmosphere of an early morning, rather than the exact appearance of the buildings and the sea. This novel attitude to art was pithily conveyed by Degas, another prominent Impressionist painter. A painting requires a little mystery, some vagueness, and some fantasy. When you make your meaning perfectly plain, you end up boring people. While many art critics of the time condemned Turner's later paintings as vulgar and tasteless, John Ruskin remained his deep admirer and published an essay in the magazine Modern Painters, praising the artist's talent. Turner's painting, light and color, as well as rain, steam and speed, were created during the apogee of his unique style, with the focus on the color and the feelings conveyed, rather than the object's depictions. Unless a viewer knows beforehand the creator of these paintings, he would be forgiven for believing them to be painted at the end of 19th century, perhaps. Light and color is a pure vortex of color, with Moses in the middle, symbolizing the day after the flood. While experimenting with color and vagueness of lines, Turner remained true to the motif of human powerlessness in the face of nature and God. In rain, steam, and speed, all elements of the composition blend together, becoming an ode to the rapidly changing world during the Industrial Revolution. The use of the verb speed in the title of painting itself suggests the changing pace in transportation. Thus, Turner became one of the first artists to experiment with the idea of conveying ideas and concepts rather than accuracy. A harbinger of change in the artistic sphere, 
Turner combines romantic ideas about the position of mankind in the natural order with the novel approach of depicting ideas rather than realistic subjects. Another British artist whose techniques and choice of color prefigured Impressionism was John Constable. Born in 1776, just a year after Turner, Constable was also inspired by Claude Lorraine. Constable's art did not earn public recognition quickly, but in 1824 he received a golden medal from King Charles X of France. Contrary to the tradition of the time, Constable chose vibrant colors for his landscapes and depicted nature in its raw beauty, not as an idealized image. Just like Turner, Constable was a romanticist, but his use of impasto techniques speaks of his impact on the Impressionist artists. He also preferred painting on plein air, so as not to be limited by the confines of his studio, another unusual format for an artist at that time. An additional trait that would become developed by, by Impressionists and started by Constable was inclusion of people in his landscape paintings. The world of music was undergoing changes as well. Richard Wagner was one of the most prolific composers in the 19th century, whose interpretation of German medieval culture and folklore became an integral part of the Romantic opera tradition. It was also Wagner who ushered a new era in music and through one of his most famous chords, which we're going to discuss later, he opened doors to numerous different exper experimental styles, um, which inspired a generation of later composers such as Ravel and Debussy. In the opera Tristan and Isolde, based on a medieval romance between the characters after whom the story is named, Wagner introduces a tonality. The Tristan chord, as it would later become named, does not belong to the key it appears in, and it accompanies moments of tension, and the unresolved dissonance leaves listeners waiting for the resolution. And this is the Tristan chord. Tonality and delay of resolution until the end mirrors the plot of the opera, with the main characters constantly yearning and searching for each other, as their love is forbidden, and their souls can only be in peace after death, thus resolving the inner conflict. This structure of a conflict and a resolution waiting until the very end of the piece had a very profound effect on the future of music, allowing for greater flexibilities. And as French composers uh, attempted to reaffirm national identity after the Franco-Prussian War, um, many composers such as Debussy, Ravel, Satie, and others uh, sought to break away from the old forms uh, as dictated by Germans. And they composed numerous ethereal, delicate pieces based on the concept of a tonality. And many Impressionist pieces do not have this format of a conflict and resolution, uh, but rather are meant to reflect the observation of nature. And the concept of the harmonious stream of music, as opposed to the strict narratological structure, uh, was indeed a new concept that Impressionists utilized. Uh, but this approach would not have been possible had Wagner not broke away from tonal harmony. How intriguing it is to gaze at the works of Turner and Constable and detect colors and patterns that would come to define new genres of art and listen to Wagner's opera knowing that in that one chord was concentrated the potential for unprecedented directions in music. Looking very closely, one can see the hidden Monet and Van Gogh in the bright sunset and a bold brushstroke. <laughs> 